Hi guys, welcome back to, um, it's Angela, welcome back to my channel. So, welcome back to my tag, I started hashtag ABCs of Tarot. We are on letter T today. Um, I think I'm going to have to break this up into two videos also, because I just have too many T decks. Um, I started this as a way to show off all of my collection, because, um, I didn't know any other way to do it. So, since I, uh, since I first started Tarot, it's been a while, and I haven't done a full collection since then. It's been like five years, so, four or five years. Um, so here goes. Without further ado, I have 13 decks, and they're in no particular order. So first we have, um, the Tarot of the Hidden Realm. This is by Julia Jeffrey and Barbara Moore. It is a Llewellyn publication. It comes with a fantastic, huge book. <clears throat> um... These are the backs, and I did um, edge them in different colors. Um, I love this deck. This is the, the probably the fir first or second fairy deck I got. And this deck, it feels like you're, it's almost like you're part of it. Um, it's just a really beautiful deck. Beautiful, beautiful deck. And I love this deck. I've used it quite a bit when I first got it. I haven't used it in a while. <laughs> goodness uh, but I haven't used it in a while but it is a stunning stunning look at that, that fortune fairy that's the uh, wheel of fortune stunning eight of swords beautiful uh, stunning that there's a certain innocence to this deck too that just it's beautiful beautiful and then there's the beautiful strength card stunning deck I love it it is the Tarot of the Hidden Realm um, it's beautiful so that was deck one deck two I put in this pouch I got from a friend at work it says you got this it is oh, da, da, the Halloween of the Trick or Treat Tarot by Barbara Moore, illustrated by Jonathan Hunt. I'm still trying to dig the deck out because I don't. I just keep it loose in that bag. Uh, da, 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 da. But it is also a Llewellyn publication. And then these are the backs. Really cool looking. And then I edged it green. Just because I wanted that green to pop more. I should have probably picked a lighter green. But I, I, that's my favorite color green right there. The darker green. So I'm like, why not? Um, I used the crap out of this deck this year. Or for 2022. It came out uh, right before Halloween 2022. And I used the crap out of it. I love it. It's so beautiful. So sweet. So it gets me so in my childhood. Um... Um, it brings back some really good memories of my childhood, and I love any deck that can do that. Uh, and everybody's, everybody in it is human, and it shows all the different unique costumes that they can come up with, and I just thought that was really stunning. Um, really stunning deck. And it can be hard-hitting, too. Uh... But for the most part, it's got this nice, playful energy to it as well, which I think is pretty cool. So that is the Trick or Treat Tarot. came out right before Halloween of 2022. Um, and I used, like I said, I used the crap out of it in 2022 for Halloween. And that's that deck. Next, we have the Tarot de la Nue, Low Scare Barrel Publication. It's a book. 
These are the backs. They got this glossy. They're a little bit bigger than regular cards. Um, and they got this glossy card stock to them. Which is typical for a Llewellyn um, two-part box. I mean, not Llewellyn. Low Scare Bureau two-part box. This is dark. But it's dark in that fairy tale, vampire -y, werewolf -y kind of way. Um, and I feel like this is also a deck that's quite underrated. It's kind of a smart ass. It is not afraid to tell you off and say, yeah, you knew this. I knew this. So let's stop playing the games, stop the charades, and just get on with the program. And I love that it's got this darkness to it. Um, but also that it matches the darkness. It's it's this, I love that death card too. It's got this smart ass attitude and I love it for that. So that was the Tarot de la Nue deck three. <clears throat> Next, it's an indie deck. Tarot of Japanese Poetry deck and guidebook. I uh, this was a Kickstarter I got finally in the um, in 2020 the, toward the beginning. It's got this thicker linen cardstock. It's beautiful bags. I love the poetry in it. The courts are renamed in this deck, and then um, there's spring, summer, winter, fall. And then you also have, or autumn, and then you have two ten of winters, which is ten of swords. Um, you also have a, uh, the courts are five. You have the princess, the prince, the knight, the king, and the queen. So you have five court cards instead of four. Um, every card has a poem with it, either a haiku or a little bit longer poem, which I think is stunning, which is why I bought this deck, plus the fact that it's this Japanese art that's just stunning. Stunning. Stunning work. And I love it. Uh, and then you also have a day before, so like the, you have a card before the aces. So there's technically 87 cards in this deck. Not 78. And I love it. Tarot Japanese Poetry. Next we have the Tarot of the Haunted House. This is a Low Scare Barrel publication. It is their typical two-part box. I mean, tuck box, which means it's a thinner, smaller card, but it shuffles like a dream. These are the backs. And then we got the front, and this one's cool. Very cool haunted house deck. It really does remind me of, um, like, going into this really cool haunted house and, like, staying the night. Um, and you never know what you're going to get in this haunted house because... But I also feel like a lot of this is play acting. And I love how this Nine of Cups here has the um, Nine of Cups in the RWS in the background as the wall tapestry. <laughs> um, I think it's cool. It's kitschy. And there's, it reminds me of, uh, like here we have the, um, her bur being burned at the stake, her running through this maze or labyrinth. It reminds me, it makes me think where you go to this haunted house and they're recreating something or reenacting something that was devastating. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, and then they pay charge money for it. <laughs> um, but I think it's a fun little Halloween deck and I love it. Um, next we have Tarot of the Abyss by Anatorian. This is a U.S. Games publication. I love her work. I have the Bones on an Earthless Tarot, which is in my B decks. I also have first and second edition of Oracle of Echoes, which is in my O decks. Um, if you want to check them out, I do have a playlist for that. I don't care that this is a black and white deck. I think, and a lot of people I've seen either color parts of it or decide they didn't want the deck at all because it's black and white. I think that is the, it 
it's almost like you pulled another layer of tarot or your soul back. And now you're looking at the insides and they're not they're It's black and white in the sense that there's either truth or lies, sun or dark. Um, and that's how I see this deck. It's very, it's not brutal, but it's, it's very truthful. And I think the black and white adds that nuance that you need to make it deep, um, to dig deeper. Like this particular five of pentacles, like you can see here, and this is the first time I saw this in a different way. She's rejecting them. They're not being allowed to come in. Even though there's two rooms here that look like they're dark and empty. There's people in these with it lit up. And I don't know that I would have the same impact seeing that. I love this justice card. Um, in color form as I would seeing it in black and white. Um, this is my very first and only one of two true black and white decks. And I have the same response to the other one as well, which is the Poe Tarot. Um, those decks are meant to be black and white for a reason. Um, it, and I feel like it's that that nuance that you're trying to catch or inspire, um, which is why it's black and white. So I think it's very deep because it's black and white. I don't think it would have the same effect if it was color. Um, and I love it. I love it to pieces. Okay, so next we have the Tarot of Mystical Moments by U.S. Games and Catherine Wells Stein. I've said it a million times. This deck was never on my list. It's edged in silver. I love these backs. Like a greenish back. I had the Oracle of Mystical Moments on my wish list forever. Then by happenstance, I acquired this deck and I got it and it, it was never meant to, never thought I was going to get this deck. And then I got it, pure luck that I got it and I instantly fell in love with it. Um, it was instantly deep and dark and twisted and um, nuanced and I loved that about it. And then I got the Oracle because I'm like, well, now I have to get the Oracle. And it just kind of laid there. I'm like, what happened? Like, it was, the roles were reversed. Um, but I love this deck. It is the one deck that I have that's an exception to animals like humans. Um, uh, and there's not that many in here, but I hate that. <laughs> and I left all the cards in because you never know. Um, they have extra, I think it's an extra emperor. A female and a male, and then they have extra kings. All the kings they have a female version. So that is Terrible Mystical Moments by Catherine Wells Stein. Next, we have another indie deck. This is the Tarot Sirene. You can't really see it there. Uh, this is a Marseille Tarot. It's, it's playing card size, but in the palm of your hand. This is a stunning deck. Look at that moon. Come on. It's a stunning stunning deck and I have barely used it I don't know why um probably because I haven't dove deep into Marseille yet but I have three three Marseille decks now true Marseille decks yeah three and I think that's why I'm just haven't got into the Marseille yet next we have the tarot at the end of the rainbow this is another uh Plus Scare Barrow deck, the two, uh, tech box, where it's the smaller, thinner card stock, but they shuffle like a dream. These are the backs. Gorgeous. It reminds me of my Universal Celtic Tarot, which we'll get to in my use. <sighs> but it's got the splash of rainbow colors in every card. There's a rainbow in every card. Maybe, yeah, on his hat. And I took this to mean, uh, I took this, this is the only deck I do that with, where I look at it and I'm like, okay, where's the rainbow and what is it highlighting? And what can I learn from whatever it's highlighting? Um, so I, I, it's taken on a different role in tarot for me for that 
reason. But it's a stunning deck. I think it's also another deck that's overrated, uh, uh, very underrated. It's very beautiful. I don't see a whole lot of people with it. But it's beautiful. And I think it's very cute. And I love it to pieces. That's my favorite card in there. Look at him. He's riding a toad. And the toads are geared up. He's got a harness on him and everything. That's so cute. So cute. Yep. And that's adorable back. And I just hit the camera again. I have like five decks. Four decks left. Four left. Okay. So next we have one of my newer ones. It's the Transient Light Tarot. And I found this on Hay House for eight bucks. I'm like, seriously? It's got a past, present, future card. Oh, shoot. Got a nice little book with it. Um, beautiful backs. Um, it is a pip deck, but I love it. It's very simplistic, but I love it. It's very deep. This to me would be a deck that I would, um, consider, even though it's brown and earthy looking, consider a emotional, um, a deck that shows emotions. Um, so in that respect, it's a very watery deck to me. And it's beautiful, and I love it. And I just keep hitting the camera, I'm sorry. Um, got three more decks to get through before my time runs out, so... I'm rushing. Sorry. Next we have Tarot of the She. It is a Red Feather publication. Schiffer Red Feather publication. Got some dirt on the box. I modded this. It's my first ever cutting down mod. Um, and then edging. But there's the backs. Here's the fronts. I love that it's got poetry on the miners. Um, everybody's seen this deck, so I'm not going to go crazy over it. But it's stunning. And I love it. And all the miners are renamed. <laughs> we got the Dancer, Maker, Dancer, Dancers or Cups, Warriors, Fire. Uh, yeah, it's pretty. So that is my Tear Up the Sheet deck beautiful. Two left. And I'm not going to get crazy. Oh my god, did I just hit the camera again? Made a patch for it. This is my Triumph de la Luna Paradoxical Rose Edition. That's all extras I just took out. Um, it's a stunning deck. It's a Marseille deck. Beautiful. I got this deck just for the wands. They're so stunning. And the cups. Look at that. Just beautiful. I think it's gorgeous. Gorgeous. This was the deck I bought to... Um, oh, look at those ones. Ugh. To learn my study. And then I haven't really... Done anything with it yet. <laughs> then we also... That's by... Um, this is an indie deck. It is by... Patrick Valenza from Deviant Moon, Inc. And the last deck is also his. This is the... Oh my god. Triumphy de la Luna Illustrated Pips Edition. And I got the plain Jane because, as you can see, I have the Paradoxical Rose on the other. That's part of the Oracle deck he's working on. This deck is stunning. And I love it. I love that it's a regular color, too. I love that I now have one of each. Um, it's stunning. It's beautiful. It's a regular. I should keep this out. <laughs> it's beautiful. I haven't really used it. Um, I have so many other decks that I've just been using. But it's so stunning. And I love it. I love this Queen of Swords. She looks like she's just been through the crap. Her, her clothes are torn. She's been through it. There's a fire in the background. Like, come on. Um, but that is the first half of my tea decks. We will get to the second video later on. Um, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, don't hesitate to comment below. 
If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more, please subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification button so you're alerted to any future videos. And y'all have a good night.